so guys i don't know if you all have noticed but it seems like there's a whole lot of movement going on recently people are moving from the uk to canada to the us from the us to the uk to australia and all of that and people are even moving back to nigeria back to ghana and while i was still wondering why this is happening at this time i came across somebody who just made that bold move of moving her family back to nigeria and this is not only her I also know somebody who moved from the uk to ghana recently after being in the uk for a while and this is also coming at a time where people are looking for opportunities to move abroad and now you're seeing people who have been abroad abandoning all that are moving back to their home countries so why is all of this happening i had to bring her here so that we can hear from the horse's mouth exactly why they made that bold move so sit back relax and enjoy why we go straight into today's video so we have a special guest today Hi. It's your favorite baby girl, Mama Dinah Ekuweme, in the building. Hello, Dinah. Welcome. We are happy to have you here. Dinah is not new on this channel, but if you're meeting her for the first time, please just say welcome to her. She just moved from Saudi Arabia down to Nigeria. She moved her whole family, guys. And I heard that Saudi Arabia, they pay professionals so well. So tell me why somebody would abandon all of that to move back to Nigeria. I can't even wait to hear all the tea. So please, Dinah, when did you move to Saudi Arabia? November this year would make it exactly two years um, moving to Saudi. We moved towards the end of 2022. Well, yeah. Here I am now in Ninja. <laughs> wow. So you've not even been up to two years abroad and you, you know, you ran back to Nigeria. Can you please tell us why? <laughs> no, wow. I think I've talked about this on my YouTube channel already, but for the viewers that haven't seen me yet, um, relocation is a personal thing. I know that people do it for different reasons. People do it because others are doing it. People do it because of their children. People do it for career prospects. People do it for the future, you know, future of their generation or whatsoever. Some people do it just, okay, to see, is there anything greener than where I am? And yeah, it's different for different people. For me, my husband was already there. When I heard Saudi Arabia for the first time, it wasn't a country where I thought, okay, I don't want to be here because if you live in Nigeria you and you live down south, you already know some of the misconceptions and some of the gist about moving to Saudi and all of that. So when he came, I was like, nah, you can go. Okay? <laughs> so my husband went and then I saw via FaceTime with everything. My husband's hands weren't chopped off. Nothing was happening. It was just like every normal abroad that people go to. It's just different language, different culture, different everything. Which, if you're if you're if you're abiding to the laws and regulations and the rules of the land, you have no issues. So the first year my husband came back, I joined him, and yeah, everything was good and it's still good even until we left. The reason why I left, I mean, if it was just me and my husband, I think I, I would still be in Saudi Arabia. If it was just me who got a job, I wouldn't be back. But because we went with children and my husband was posted in a in a village, literally. Um, it's not the village that you guys think, not Niger village, but in Saudi, we call them villages, like suburbs and all of that. So because it was posted there, um, yeah, I was homeschooling. I was doing everything all of you abroad do as moms. The difference is that as a dependent in Saudi, you are not permitted to work. So I was stuck with the kids 247. And even if I tried to get or switch visa to get a job, it wouldn't be possible with just three kids unless I try to hire a nanny or get them to go to school. So the two years or almost two years we spent there, we saw changes with our kids, you know, they were lagging with some of their developmental milestones, which I've been open about, um, especially with our first, who was experiencing speech delay. And yeah, we had to sit down and have a whole lot of discussion. And yeah, 
that was how Nigeria came into the picture. Cause I mean, where 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 do we go? There there wasn't any English speaking school where we were, and even if we were to enroll them into online school, they were all below the age of five. You still have to be there, present, and you know doing the whole thing with them. There is no social interaction. The little social interaction we had was with other Nigerian kids. So it, everything was limited. And even some of the kids there struggled with the same things we were struggling. So it was kind of a limiting factor for us. So, I mean, if we were in a bigger city like Riyadh or Jeddah, the popular ones with loads of English schools, I think we'd probably put them in school and we'll probably still be in Saudi. And the idea of still living soon to a better place, we're like, let's just have these kids come back for holiday seriously our ticket is actually a holiday ticket but since they started summer camp we've seen so much improvement the kids are now bubbly talking we were like what's the point of still sending them back to stay indoors okay. and not here so we just decided that let the kids be here for now until we sort out our future goals and our future plans, where we would all be as a family or any country of my husband's choice, where we would all move to as a family. So yeah, my Japada decision was very personal. It was for my children, for their betterment. Left to me, Saudi is an amazing country. I keep telling my husband I would retire in Saudi, <laughs> but I go to Antarctica and come back. In my 50s, I would love to stay in the Middle East because of the career prospects, the taxing, the everything, the lifestyle. I was being pampered <laughs> in Saudi. So yeah, nothing negative about the country. Just it wasn't favoring my kids. That's why we returned. Okay. So you moved specifically for your kids. And that makes sense because I've also seen or heard stories about people sending their kids back to Nigeria, you know, because of this same issue as well. Yeah. Even though these ones are not in Saudi, you know, I've heard about people here in the UK that send their, their children back to Nigeria and all of that. So we understand where you guys are coming from, right? So now that you are in Nigeria, okay, yeah. is there anything different? Because <laughs> you've been out of Nigeria for two years and you have gone back. <laughs> Even my background, before this video started, you know the war we went through. <laughs> Everything is different. First off, I know we have a global crisis with inflation, economy. Everyone is feeling it globally. Some countries are feeling the heat more than others. But Niger won. I don't know if we're close to hellfire. If we're just, I don't know. What's happening here is mad. Just today, I was sharing on my Instagram story that I'm just sitting down and thinking. We landed Nigeria 19th of July this year, 2024. Today is the 3rd of September. In just one month, when we came back, fuel was at 840 naira per liter. I remember the shock I got going to the filling station. Today, as I'm speaking to you, in Port Harcourt City, is at 1,000 naira per liter everything is going up i came back to eggs being 4500 now is at 5200 like everything is going up and is mad the things that are so basic the things that you need for just basic enjoyment the things i took for granted in saudi arabia i'm paying double for it here just to afford it like the lifestyle i i led before moving out Moving back in, I, I can't even keep up with that same lifestyle. I've had to cut down. I've had to prioritize a whole lot of things, you know. Yeah, cost of living is the major one killing us here. Um, I know many people will be like, boy, it's everywhere, boy, it's everywhere. You need to taste Nigeria's cost of living to understand where I'm coming from. It's not funny, especially if you have kids below the age of five. You have to feed these kids. They don't, they don't know what is economy. So you just have to... Be mindful of your spending. And even with the budget, and even if you budget and budget, it gets to a point where you're wondering, where is all the money going to? Because the budget you had for last month will not make sense the next month because things are just going up. So yeah, that's the major cultural shock or reverse cultural shock I've been getting since moving back. But other than that, Nigeria is Nigeria. Oh, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Now that reminds me, because you have tasted, you know, the both worlds, yeah. you I think you'll be in a better position to answer this question. Some yeah. time ago, there was this argument on on social media about people that go abroad to start afresh. Some people or some persons tag them as foolish. Like somebody says, how can you take twenty million naira and go abroad? and probably go on a study visa and just waste and pay school fees and all of that where you can use that and start a business in your home country right so there was a lot of argument around that some people said oh moving abroad is the best decision i made i can't stand in nigeria Some people said no i can't live abroad and all of that so aside the fact that your kids were affected yeah where would you prefer to live right now yes that's a tough one I would actually prefer to live in Imo State. Like, <laughs> if you left me alone, no, I would probably, if I have just the freedom, you know, maybe my husband was on my side. We discussed this, no kids, nothing, just me personally. I would buy a land off grid, <laughs> start rearing animals, start cultivating food, probably start up a local business build some three four bedroom bungalow just for shelter's sake and just live off grid because okay. i don't know that's where i'm at right now probably not in most states maybe anywhere within the east outskirts buy a piece of land or plots of lands have a farm have a garden have a house okay like, nigeria okay. is still the best if you remove bad policies and governments and whatsoever i don't like I, I don't think i can mentally function the way or i don't think i'm happy the way i'm happy in nigeria elsewhere no place like nigeria for me and this is a personal thing people can disagree but yeah but for people who are looking for maybe nigeria is not working for them they've tried everything and you know it's just not working do you think is is worth moving abroad definitely the the some of the things i learned i didn't learn it in nigeria i mean if i schooled in nigeria i mean for university i think my orientation my way of thinking my attitude towards life would have probably been different i feel like there was one quote i heard from an influencer somewhere everyone needs to taste abroad whether it turns out positive or negative for them whether they end up appreciating or regretting it everyone needs to have that taste of a better life yeah but i've always been pro nigeria regardless if you have the means and you feel like you've done everything everything you can do and it's not working and you're probably in that lower middle income or lower class i would say leave but if you are seeing something from your business you live a comfortable life you have something going like at the end of the month you're not lacking feeding your family affording vacation affording the basic things even traveling within nigeria i would say going abroad for experience for maybe courses programs vacations but not to go and stay permanently i've always been pro stay home but for people who is pro stay home it's just that the country is not working and it is working for some people though Sure. I'm complaining. How many people can, can afford going for vacation every Trust year in Nigeria? Me. How many That's people? Me. Come to think of it, how many how many people can afford that in Nigeria? Let's be realistic here, right? Yeah. Nobody, nobody wants to truly leave their father's land and just go somewhere, you know, somewhere else. And we all know how abroad is. It's really not very easy. Some people have to start from the scratch. Some people have to struggle. There are people who, you know, left their businesses, sold their lands, their properties, just so they could afford it. It's not like if things were good, they would have done all that. Like you said, it's like that. It's not that. We saw people who did that. We, we even see more of them come on social media. I mean, the majority, most people are on the positive end. Like, even if I'm not the richest abroad, I'm comfortable. I, I can afford the life that. The I never basic things of life, basic things. 
every freedom has a cost what's the cost of living abroad are you able to deal with that cost of living abroad there are some things that people end up saying okay at some point you get to that level i have everything now i've gotten it all i have the house i have the car my kids are okay nobody's starving but then there are still things that you have to deal with living abroad that sometimes you sit back and you're like if i was in my country it wouldn't be like this racism for one there's tribalism back home like you said it's a personal thing everybody knows what they want from life yeah. and why they make decisions that they make for themselves and them and their families so whatever works for you abroad did not work for diana okay and she has gone back to nigeria he's still working for me because he's still there we're not totally okay. out of the abroad right yeah. we're here with the kids we're still enjoying the benefits of somebody being abroad so i'll be a hypocrite to say do not move abroad if you want to move like i said move but weigh the pros and cons i'm just pro it's like someone telling me i'm pro this but it's your choice you can't force anything on anyone it's your choice to go and taste and see that like there are people who have done the same thing i've done in western economies two three years they're back because they're like i don't think i can live this life not because abroad is not everything they don't have the freedom or the kids no but because they just it's not just for them for personal reasons yeah we got to always battle this case every time she moved because of her children it's not about her children she would have still been in saudi arabia and i'm sure yeah. that she's also going to leave maybe to another country very soon so you should not listen to diana if you want See, to move abroad please yeah. move abroad. if my husband tells me now that he's moving to Riyadh, i'm back to saudi have you guys heard it i'm back to saudi because of my kids because now i'm married you asked me a question about me personally without the kids that's what i want but marriage you have no say when the kids are involved when family unit is involved when you have someone to answer to so it's yeah it's just subjective it's personal i've always said this it's like me complaining of child care no one will understand they're like but you're abroad you should be grateful you have children you have da, 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 until you go and you try to take care of three kids alone then you know this is not the abroad that envisioned <laughs> that it's well to, to be fair not only um are people moving back home people are also moving there are people who have moved to the uk and they feel like okay my time in the uk is done it's time to go somewhere else they pick pack up their bags their families and move to australia canada usa same with people in the us they pack up so i think it's just life right it's just part of life even god instructed abraham instructed abraham to leave and he moved from one place to the other so it's just life people are definitely going to move it's being there it's going to continue so guys that's it always do whatever works for your family she chose family first she chose her children first and that was why she had to move to Nigeria. So yeah, that's it. I hope you guys have gotten something, taking one or two from this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you, Diana, for coming. Guys, feel free to visit her channel if you don't know her because she's a big YouTuber. I know you guys know her, but if you don't know her, her I'm channel... Never rich, oh, please, don't they hype me. Wait <laughs> I'm yeah. a rich, oh, <laughs> Her channel name is Diana Ekweme. Um, do well to visit her and show her support. I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye. Bye. Bye.